Hey guys, what's going on? Steven back again, and I'm back with another Dark Angels lore video from Voldemort's Guide to Warhammer. Now, I know I've been doing a lot of Dark Angels lore videos, but I just want to say that there is absolutely no favoritism at all for the reason why I've been picking all these Dark Angel. Damn it, I really wanted to keep a straight face doing that, but I just failed miserably. God damn it. I tried. I tried. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, my new phone case. Yep. Got it off the uh, Games Workshop store or one of the official licensed other stores or something like that. So, um, but yeah, I really tried. Uh, but yeah, I will get to, you know, some of the other videos, you know, because I do want to learn about more about, um, you know, Blood Angels and Dark Templars. Uh, you know, I did play some Blood Angels for a while. I did shift uh, from chapter to chapter. Uh, Dark uh, Black Templars was going to be my next chapter. Um, had uh, Games Workshop not decided to be like, hey, we don't want any more stores, so we're going to leave. You know, because I thought the Emperor's Champion was really cool and stuff like that, and I wanted to learn uh, more about their lore. But yeah, I will get to uh, other videos and stuff like that, so don't worry. Uh, so anyway, today's video is called Semiel, Lord of the Hunt. All right, here we go. I do hope the audio is okay. I did kind of fiddle around with some of my OBS settings. It seemed fine in the testing, but... Semiel, we'll have to see Lord what of the Raven Wing. The skies were dark and terrible. I just hope it's it not either no too quiet or too loud. Made them so. It was their contents. About the tower world their ship had hidden, disgorging its strike force into the atmosphere during a solar storm, so that the tower could not bear witness to their movements. A rare and serendipitous event. The first luck they had seen. I hate once. this camera. The Emperor wills it, saw the heroic figure on his jet bike. Possibly the only one left outside of the armies of the Custodian Guard. The Ten Thousand. Samael, Lord of the Ravenwing, perched, peering down at the facility below. His comms ray flashed up and an officer reported. Sire, the defensive batteries could take a toll. These Xenos are more advanced than we considered. It could be costly. Samael measured his position carefully. Speed was of the essence, if they were to not be bogged down. The tower could never face their wrath, the hatred they brought. But it could indeed be costly. Samael knew not to take these scum lightly. We have countermeasures, but they have been contained by these filth before. We must rely on the rarest of our Archeotech, the most brutal of our potential weapons. Send it. The comms officer paused before stating, Are you sure, my liege? I, I am lieutenant. Send it now. With an assault of this magnitude, their defenses will be down for long enough to get in and out. He then dipped his bike, and the entire Ravenwing force screeched down in his wake. Send it now! Interesting. Raid Shadow Legends, where you too can be a legend. It's like being on a console, but in the palm of your hand. Gaming has never been so easy, convenient, or immersive. And it's all free today. Probably <laughs> jump ahead. Weirdo. 50 very fun. Like all things, though, in moderation. And back to the action. And thus did the most ancient and brutal electronic warfare known to man cascade through the tower comms and into the tower very subsystems. Their shielding collapsing. Oh, we're going after the tower. Their into disuse, sumping down like a cocktail filled soak on a Friday night. And within moments, the Raven Wing fell on the facility. The land speed of vengeance vehicles taking point behind Samuel on his jet bike. Followed closely behind by a collage of land speeder storms, the new hail, thunder, and hammer stroke storm speeders. Missiles, bolters, and concentrated fire of nearly all kinds tore the buildings of the facility apart. The Dark Angels had arrived. They were hunting. Oh, so they attacked a facility. One that had tried to hide the facility of the Xenos infested world. A world that had once been imperial, once been loyal. Oh, so it was an imperial place. From start to conclusion, that was once loyal. In the clutches of the Ravenwing, in a tower-held world, 
that would forever after dread the coming of a solar storm, dread the coming of the Imperium. As it should be, thought Samuel. And one day, alien filth, we will return. And on that day, we shall not depart until every last blue Xenos and traitor scum is scourged from this globe. <laughs> Kill those alien scum. <clears throat> Welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the forces, factions, and important faces of the Warhammer 40k universe, the grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace, there is only time for There's war. There is only war. And today, as we all await the arrival of the new Dark Angels Codex tomorrow, I thought I would reach back into the very oh, early of my time on the guides and deal with Interesting. Sunday the Grand Master of the Raven Wing. For in my prognostications for the Psychic Awakening, my list of things I thought would make the most splash, be the most dramatic and fan-awaited output the Games Workshop could give us, I covered the Dark Angels and my wish for them. And I so thought, so wished, so hoped that we would see the reintroduction of the jet bike to the chapters. Seen in every legion of the Adeptus Astartes, the Space Marines, and the Great Crusade. Why did they take the also, jet bikes out at some point? In model form to 40k itself, via the custodian bodyguards of the Emperor himself, the 10,000, the custodies. I really did think we would see them become a mainstay again. Alas, not yet. Perhaps one day. But there is still one man, one Astartes, one hero of the chapters, who has the singular honor of riding into battle on what may very well be the last of the Mark 14 jet bikes of the Great Crusade era. Really? Course, I speak of Samael of the Dark Angels. Did they get new jet and bikes or upgraded listener. jet bikes? Let us hear this man, his role, his history, and his goals. And so, as usual, let us lean on existing wisdom. To quote Samael. Samael is the current and 348th Grand Master of the Ravenwing and leader of the hunt. The captain of the elite second company of the Dark Angels chapter of Space Marines, who leads that chapter's hunt for the fallen angels. As a senior member of the Angels in the oh, so he, he hunts down the fallen. The dangers that the fallen present to the chapter and its honor. The leader of so the what does he hunt down the fallen and the then take them to the interrogator chaplains? The that turned from the lion, and the current incumbent Samuel epitomizes the dynamism and Elan required for the role. Samael is bold to the point of being reckless, a trait required in order to head a mobile company whose success depends upon speed and hard-hitting surprise. I mean, those Despite jet bikes do look pretty badass. Audacity, I will Samael's say that. reign at the head of the company has already been unusually long and successful. Although masterful at orchestrating distracting maneuvers and feints, if given a chance, Samael much prefers to take matters into his own hands. From the saddle of Corvex, his jet bike, a relic from the bygone age of technology. Grand Master Samael cuts down any foolish enough to face him. Oh, okay, so he's got an older version of a jet bike. Hunt, Raven Sword, an heirloom that has served all Ravenwing Grand Masters before him. The blade, one of three forged from a meteorite that struck the rock long ago, has a razor sharp edge that never dulls. When swung, it makes a low keening sound that few foes here and live to tell the tale. Although the Raven That's pretty cool. known across the galaxy as the most elite mobile strike force in the Imperium, none but Grand Master Samael and his trusted Ravenwing Black Knights know the full details of their company's true purpose. Samael's task is to seek out and capture the Fallen, all the while ensuring that the majority of his black-clad hunters never learn too much about the nature of their quarry. It is a task that has grown much harder since the opening of the Great Rift, for never before has the Ravenwing had so many fallen hunts in so short a space of time. While over two dozen have been captured, Samael dwells endlessly upon the ones that got away and seeks revenge upon the one named Marbas, the demon prince who, unknown even to the Grand Master, was responsible for the escape of the arch-traitor Luther from his imprisonment deep within the rock. History. Interesting. So they've captured the what, like 24? The of the 8th Reserve Company, Samael quickly earned the admiration of his fellow space marines with his forthright tactical acumen and insatiable drive. 
Having only fought as a fully-fledged battle brother for a handful of years, Samael was bent on earning respect and promoted to the Dark Angels Battle Companies as quickly as possible. Wow, so he rise pretty quickly amongst the ranks. For additional duties and spent every moment when he was not in combat or on vigil honing his skills in the battle halls of the rock. Adeptus Astartes' implants and training had boosted an already considerable natural talent and made him a fearsome bladesman. Samael frequently placed high in the ritualized duels and tournaments that occur amongst the Dark Angels, building a comradely rivalry with Grand Master Belial, whom he has never been able to best. His insights on the battlefield were as incisive as his sword blows, garnering him the rank of sergeant in only his fifth standard year as a full battle brother. Wow. Always adhering to orders from his chapter master. So that must be pretty quick then. In five years he got command. promoted to sergeant. Samuel nevertheless had an instinct for positioning his squad at the forefront of any assault or counterattack. Wherever an assault squad was needed to punch through a foe's weak point or respond to an enemy breakthrough, Samael and his warriors were always the unit closest to hand for the mission. Such gifts did not go unnoticed, and the previous master of the Ravenwing, Gideon, personally selected Samael for observation. Gideon conducted the rites of preparation himself, and was pleased to find that Samael was capable of handling the secrets of the hunt as well as he handled his chainsword. In Black Sable, the greatest dark angel ever to be inducted into the Ravenwing, Samael was treated as something of a talisman by his squadron brothers. His natural flair for attack and mobile defense took him to the position of sergeant in swift years once again, and Samael's easy camaraderie ensured that there were none that served with him who begrudged the promotion. On Scarkis, Velindor IV, Neophastus, and Pelagian, against the orc horde of Grisgor, the Underfiend, and the renegade warbands of the Scarbrail Cluster, Samael's exploits continued to gain him renown amongst his battle brothers. On Kaphon Betis, when Samael was still a sergeant in the Raven Wing, the future Grand Master first heard the name Cypher. Kaphon Betis had been subjected to repeated assaults oh, by Eldar Oh yes, yeah, Cypher. We we'll watched the video on him. For Cypher and his band to destabilize the rule of the Imperial Commander. Grand Master Gideon regretted deeply that the Dark Angels had been so close to catching their arch foe. The Fallen had still been in system when the Raven Wing arrived, alongside warriors of the Death Wing. Though the Dark Angels did not know at the time that their Cipher has always was escaped. Still nearby. By the time the Dark Angels drove off the Eldar attacks, Cipher had slipped away once more. Samael took several prisoners from pro Xenos cults and overheard their discussions of. Lord Cypher, learning that this mysterious individual had been the mastermind behind much of the upheaval. Faced with Samael's questions, Grandmaster Gideon chose to take Samael into his confidence, inducting him unofficially into the inner circle of the chapter. Ooh, An induction unofficially. That was ratified when they returned to the rock. When Samael and his squadron were instructed in the capture of the fallen known as Icanus during the Rustanstad uprisings, Grandmaster Gideon again singled out a warrior for a special praise and elevated him to the ranks of the Black Knights. Chaos at Capua. When word reached the Tower of Angels now, what are the of a Black chaos Knights? tainted uprising in the Capua system, the Raven Wing was dispatched to ascertain whether there was any. Or is that just code for the Raven Wing? The chapter's bitter outcasts are accused of fomenting many such rebellions. The second company arrived at Capua and performed a lightning drop onto the storm-shrouded world of Capua 7. The initial attack met little resistance, mostly rebels and chaos cultists poorly equipped to take on the elite of the Dark Angels. However, this early success was soon reversed by the intervention of traitor marines from the Black Legion and word bearers. Ooh. Though their numbers were small, their presence bolstered the resolve of the Chaos worshippers, and Grandmaster Gideon was forced to withdraw or risk his formation getting bogged down in a static battle of attrition with the Chaos Space Marines, an engagement for which the foe was better suited. Over the course of the following days, the Raven Wing conducted several scouting forays and a reconnaissance in force to establish the extent of the foes facing them and to draw out and destroy such enemy elements as could be lured from their defensive lines. With this intelligence in hand, Gideon and his veterans identified the city of Vespengard as integral to the traitor's plans and composed a plan of attack that would pull apart the defenders 
and see them destroyed piecemeal. The next phase of the campaign started well, as encircling Ravenwing forces baited squads oh, of oh, started well. bastions and bunkers, That's not a good opening sign. up a gap in the approaches to Vespingard. Grand Master Gideon led the attack on the chaos-held settlement with the bulk of his forces, driving his bikers and land speeders through the breach in the enemy cordon. Disaster struck upon reaching the inner realms of Vespingard. The commander of the uprising had kept hidden his greatest weapon, a Reva class Titan, corrupted Ooh, by the promises of the Chaos. That's Guards. a pretty cool looking model. The traitorous ire dominated the open spaces and wide thoroughfares of the city's heart, its turbo lasers and gatling blasters driving back the Ravenwing advance. While they recoiled from this blow, the Dark Angels found that the errant word bearers had returned to their positions in a pre planned move to ensnare the Ravenwing. They were surrounded. Uh -oh. Gideon was convinced that the enemy was led by one of the fallen, for who else could have known the Dark Angel's way of war so well as to organize such an effective ambush? Mm. That is Rather a good point. Rather order a breakout from the city, he commanded his warriors to attack the traitor's hire. If the Chaos Titan could be removed from the battle, the city would again belong to the Dark Angels, and the traitors could be hunted down in the wilds. The Grand Master led the attack with Samael at his right hand punching through the cultists that swarmed from the buildings to bar the Ravenwing's path and slow them down enough for the Titan to engage. As they reached one of the central squares, the Raven Guard were caught by a tiny fusillade from the traitor's ire Gatling cannon. Massive shells slammed into the road and sent debris crashing down from the surrounding buildings. Gideon and his squad were caught on the edge of one such blast. Space Marines and assault bikes were flung through the air by the immense detonation. Flaming debris rained down upon the Ferrocrete Road, and Samael was momentarily knocked unconscious amongst the dead and wounded. Oh, wow. Rising from the ashes. That must have been one hell of a blast. When he recovered his senses, Samael pushed himself from the rubble to find his bike was smashed beyond use, and the company was in disarray. Enemies were closing from the rear, and the traitorous ire had surviving Ravenwing pinned back in alleys and side roads where the cultists would be able to ambush them with ease. Gideon lay crushed beneath a slab of masonry. His armor cracked in a dozen. And I take it Samael rallied the rest of the pulverized. Raven Wing. Yet the Grand Master still hung to life, as Samael found him amongst the devastation. Samael asked the mortally wounded Grand Master whether or not they should press the attack or withdraw. Gideon responded what are your that orders? he could not say, and with his last strength and breath, he pulled the Raven Sword free of its scabbard and told Samael the company was now his to lead. With this final effort, Grandmaster Gideon, a veteran of six Terran centuries of war, died. Samael wow. wasted no time in taking command of the demoralized Raven Wing, securing himself a functioning steed from the Kind of got like wreckage. a battlefield promotion. He commanded the land speeders to conduct hurrying raids on the enemy Titan, while the bikes and attack bikes regrouped under the shadowy veil of a dark shroud. The situation was grim. Communication from the fleet announced that traitor vessels were closing on the Ravenwing's battle barge, implacable justice, and no orbital support could be expected. The company had lost nearly a third of its warriors and machines. Samael did not expend any time worrying about reorganization, but left it to his veterans and sergeants to form such, such squadrons as were needed. Wishing to see Gideon's plan to fruition, Samael led a fresh attack on the traitor's ire using the land speeders and dark shroud to feign a rear attack, while a second force was sent to the east, forming a diversion on the war engine's auger returns. Their energy signatures masked by burning buildings, sparking power lines and venting reactors. A handful of the Ravenwing's most adept riders well followed hiding, the uh, wounds created by the Hiding their weapons. heat signatures and everything they like that. That's cover, pretty smart. The traitorous ire turned to confront the fate from the east. Bike-mounted weapons, even the plasma talents of the Black Knights, were little use against the void shields of a Titan. Instead, Samael put his faith in speed, tearing across the square at the head of his warriors to strike from within the energy defense of the war machine. Cultists in the surrounding buildings opened fire on the charging Raven Wing, but they dodged and jinked with reckless abandon, and all survived to reach the Titan. Barely slowing, each sped past the machine's lumbering feet in quick succession, hurling all the melter bombs and charges the force possessed as they raced towards the Titan's legs. Even before they were clear, Samael detonated the bombs, 
shearing away the lower right leg of the traitor's eye. Wow. As the bear must collapse, its reactors exploded, levelling the buildings still standing on the square and showering flaming metal and ceramite onto the swiftly retreating raven wing. Throwing and he didn't even wait to detonate. The chaos he was like, just do it now. Samuel kept the raven wing mobile, always attacking and harassing, fighting continuously for seven weeks until reinforcements from the Death Wing and the Dark Angels' 4th and 5th companies arrived to purge Capua 7 of the Chaos Taint once and for all. Much to Samuel's disappointment, no member of the Fallen was ever located, but the destruction of oh, the Traitor totally of Fire sucks. You didn't get is still anyone. remembered as one of the Raven Wing's greatest achievements. On returning to the Rock, Samuel's promotion was endorsed by the other Masters of the Chapter, and he has led the second company for more than a century. Wow. Leader of the hunt. Samuel has discharged his duties as Grand Master of the Raven Wing with a blend of, of careful planning and audacious bravery. Under his leadership, the Second Company has perhaps gained even more of a reputation for recklessness and independence, but their numerous victories stand as a testament to his skill as a commander and his talent for leadership. Though bound by sacred duty to pursue their fallen, Samuel so what, they're is the kind of reckless? In a <coughs> Confident mm, that with voice. Supreme Grand Master Azrael's guidance, Belial's determination and his daring, the hunt has entered a decisive phase. There are those amongst the inner circle, interrogator chaplain Asmodai, most vocal amongst them, who wish Samuel's company exercised more discipline at times. But such criticism does not diminish the Grand Master's achievements. As a newly appointed 348th Grand Master of the Raven Wing, Samuel's first action came when he led his company in the initial invasion of the world of Rastabal. This action was quickly followed during the Fourth Quadrant Rebellion, when Samuel led the Dark Angel's assault upon the fortress of the Pretender Caligar, one of the Fallen, whose presence Samuel personally ferreted out. He ran the traitor to ground after a mighty duel that is said to have lasted nearly a day and a night. His wow. next action was leading the second company against the Orcs of Charador. And that was just Charador, a duel? Near Rin's world and Bad Landing. That's pretty crazy. This is the beleaguered Crimson Fist chapter in retaking their homeworld from War Snagrod. During the orbital drop on Rin's world, Samuel Thunderhawk was struck by unusually accurate Orc anti-orbital guns. Samuel did the unthinkable, staging the only recorded successful orbital drop separation maneuver. Flying out of the stricken gunship on his jet bike before the crippled Thunderhawk crashed onto the surface of the planet. Wait, so he jumped As a out true angel of death, on his jet Samuel bike? Is privileged That's pretty badass. On an Imperial jet bike. An ancient war machine left over from the days of the Great Crusade. Armed with a ferocious plasma cannon, the jet bike is feared by the Dark Angel's foes almost as much as Samael himself. This previous that is a pretty badass looking model. Is highly prized, as it has not been seen in the service of the Imperium in millennia. Well, previous to Belisarius Core, anyway. Launching lightning fast assaults and riding down the enemies of the chapters from astride his ancient war machine, Samael cuts down all of those foolish enough to oppose him with the infamous Raven Sword. This mighty blade is said to have been cut from the same meteorite as the infamous Dark Angel's Sword of Secrets and the other Heavenfall Blades. Samuel sword of is secrets by his brethren and fears that one fears. about and now following the iron covering of a fallen plot at the chapter's recruiting world of Piscina 4 and the destruction of a fallen starbase at Port Imperial Samael is on the trail of Cypher once more this well, time Samael everybody's going after Cypher cursed fallen will not elude the raven wing poor gear Corvex the Grand Master of the Raven Wing is privileged to ride into battle upon a venerable Mark 14 jet bike, a nearly extinct form of architect that dates back to the earliest days of the Imperium of Man. During the Horus Heresy, many of the ancient Space Marine legions fielded similar jet bikes. This formidable and sleek craft allowed its riders to soar at a great speed across the battlefield. Held aloft by archaic anti graphitic technology, Lost to the tech priest of the Adeptus Mechanicus in the waning days of the 41st millennium, again, until the return of Belisarius Corps, Samuel's jet bike is as deadly as its master, for it is armed with front-mounted storm bolters and an underslung plasma cannon. 
itself an example that's not that that's ancient technology pretty well it's equipped. fusion generator capable of powering many hundreds I mean, of that shots. speeder does look really many cool. times corvex has been for the front looks badass destroyed. but always it returns as does its master whether the Dark Angels maintain a cache of such relics, or have retained possession of a long-lost STC template for the vehicle is unknown, as they do not share their secrets with others, including the Mechanicus. Sable Core Somehow sometimes makes use of an Imperial Landspeeder built to the highest standards. His personal conveyance, Sable Core, is equipped with twin-linked heavy bolters and a twin-linked assault cannon. The Grand Master of the Ravenwing's personal That is a pretty badass picture, I will say that. Device, ...known as the Shield of Night. This device generates a powerful defensive graphitic energy field around the vehicle, deflecting enemy small arms fire. Oh, so that's Ravenwing what it does. Mantle. Samael wears a cloak okay, that's cool. by the Dark I thought it was just interrogated decorative. Champions ...within the inner sanctum beneath the Tower of Angels on the rock. This cloak is interwoven with rare minerals and fibers from the fabled Cloak of the Lion. The Raven's Cuirass The Raven's Cuirass is a finely crafted and heavily modified Mach 5 heresy power armor breastplate utilized as part of Samuel's panoply of war. Night Halo This Dark Angel's icon is a symbol of bravery and a ward against the weapons of the enemy. It has served many Grand Masters of the Raven Wing, and Samuel's faith in its protective powers has proved well founded over his many years of battle. The Night Halo is able to ward against the weapons of the enemy as it incorporates a powerful conversion field emitter that can turn aside even the most deadly attacks. The Raven Sword. This infamous master crafted power sword so is pretty well equipped. Of legendary swords collected must get an the save. Four blades. These formidable weapons are only carried by the highest ranking members of the Dark Angel's inner circle. Chapter Lore states that these blades were forged from the core of a meteorite that struck the rock in orbit around the feral world of Al-Baradad. The mightiest of these blades is a sword of secrets, carried by the supreme Grand Master of the chapter, and the current wielder of that sword is Azrael. Oh, the blades okay. wielded by the Grand Master of the Deathwing and the Grand Master of the Ravenwing also utilize small amounts of the obsidian taken from the meteorite in their working. It is also said that a small portion of this meteoric substance was dispatched to each of the Dark Angel's successor chapters, so the senior members of the Unforgiven's own inner circles would also bear the same heritage forged in steel as those borne by the Masters of the Dark Angels. Oh, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so we went to some and of the other chapters. Quote. Ah, Samael. A wonderful model and a magnificent character. I do wonder if we will ever get jetpacks for our chapters, as I certainly would love to be able to dance amongst the skies against the likes of the Dukari and Eldar jetpacks. Perhaps a treat for another year. Go on, GW. Give it to us. Take our money. <laughs> now many will say that this is a very Take basic our history, money. which I cannot refute. So, as I am certainly no expert in the mighty fighting first, and have yet to receive more resources to upskill my knowledge. I now invite the older, more experienced fans of this glorious chapter to divulge what they know, what I may have missed, their favorite books, audio dramas, and tidbits of lore, so the uninitiated brothers and sisters can have a better guide than I alone am able to perform on this wonderful character and the power of the Legion. I look forward to your advice, your knowledge, and the discourse I hope it to elicit. For at the very end of the day, I am only one Bolly, and nobody can know it all. So lend the bold a hand, and share the knowledge you have. For we will know more working together than any of us alone could ever dream of remembering. So have at it, lads and lasses. Parade your love of the first on this night of vigil before the Codex drops tomorrow. For this one book may just raise the first to its proper place, as lions on the tabletop. Okay, so they got a new codex. I have been Baltimore, your faithful servant. I hope you've enjoyed. When was that? Oh, wow, it was just recent. So February 6th, they got a new codex. Interesting, I didn't know that. I'll have to uh, take a quick peek here. Yeah, I had no idea they came up with a, um, you know, a new codex and everything like that. 
Let's see, Space Marines, Dark Angels. Oh yeah, there it is. Wow, 30 bucks. Oof. Codex Supplement, Dark Angels. Wow. Twenty-three data sheets covering units that are unique to the Dark Angels and the successors. Uh, secondary objectives, warlord trades, relics, psychic disciplines. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Wow, looks like a really nice book. Hardcover too. All right, so there we go. There is a uh, Voldemort's Guide to Warhammer Semiel. That was a. Uh, pretty interesting lord of the hunt so he goes and hunts down um the fallen and stuff like that what it's a uh two dozen of them so i'm assuming he takes them and brings them to the interrogator chaplains and the interrogator chaplains uh do some things to get them to confess yeah <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool how quickly he, he um, you know, rose among the ranks. What do you say? Uh, five years and he became a sergeant. I'm assuming that is extremely quickly. I don't know how, you know, what the uh, ranking is. Like what's a normal time frame uh, to become a sergeant if five years is considered pretty fast. Um, and then, of course, during that battle and everything like that, he became... I guess you can say battlefield promotion and became Lord of the Hunt, you know? So, yeah, that's actually uh, pretty damn cool, you know? I guess they do consider him kind of reckless and stuff like that, but after everything he's done, you know, they gotta kind of. I don't know, kind of go with it, if you will. But yeah, his uh, his jet bike is actually really cool. You know, I do like that. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there's his model right here. That does look really cool. I mean, his jet bike looks badass. Even though it is an old one, I mean, it's still, still really cool. Sometimes some of the older stuff looks better than the new stuff you know what I mean I just really like that front that front's pretty badass hmm yeah that is pretty cool 4950 wow. oof expensive Yeah, these are all just like generic and stuff like that. I still kind of want that model, the interrogator chaplain. He's pretty cool. Azrael, yep. Dark Angel's master. I don't know him, but his model seems really cool too. I actually really like that one. Him holding his helmet and stuff like that. Okay, it looks like there's a couple of different heads. So you can have the, the regular standard one with the looks like the scar right over the eye, and then you got this other one here with the um, bionicle eye, if you will. Oh, and you can have him with a helmet. Kind of funny, it's not the same helmet that he's carrying. Hmm. Yeah, there are the three heads. Huh. That is kind of interesting that, um... The helmet he carries isn't the same one you can wear. You can have him wear, you know? Because that actually looks really cool with the wings and stuff like that. But apparently you just get the regular head, the head with the bionicle eye, and then just uh, the regular helmet. But either way, that's a cool model. Primaris Lieutenant. Hmm, I don't know him. Asmodai. Huh. Alright, so anyways, there we go. Samael, Lord of the Hunt. That was really cool. 
I really enjoyed learning more about him, Ravenwing, all that stuff, hunting the fallen, uh, the jet bike, the different weapons from, you know, the meteorite that hit the rock and everything like that, and how, you know, parts of it went to, you know, all uh, some of the other what do they say, sub-chapters and stuff like that, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, just overall, that was uh, that was really cool and very interesting. Uh, so, anyways, uh, let me know what you guys think. Was there anything, you know, like at the end he said, you know, he missed, or uh, is there anything else that he didn't cover? Let me know. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. That'd be awesome. Remember, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description box below. And, of course, definitely stick around. You know, I still got more uh, text-to-speech videos to do. I'll definitely be doing more lore videos. Uh, I think I still have the big... Um, Uh, the big Dark Angels one, because I didn't do that one yet, because I think that one was pretty long. I think it was like um, an hour or so, I think. I don't remember. Oof. Imperial Fists. Ooh. Two and a half hours. Oh. That'd have to be cut into like multiple videos. Blood of Bale. That sounds interesting. Maybe that will be uh, that will be next. Homunculus. I hear that's actually very disturbing. An hour and nine videos. Yeah, that would have to get split up into a couple. Uh, Blood Ravens. That one's pretty interesting. Uh, Emperor's Champion. Yeah, I'll we'll definitely have to do that one. Oops. Enjoy this brief introduction to Samael. If so, then please do consider liking uh, and subscribing. What else do we got? Black Legion, the grim darkness of the Imperium. That one would be pretty interesting. Thunder Warriors, Chaos Defilers, Librarians. Ooh. Car and the Betrayer. Oh, that'd actually be really cool. Salamanders, Terminator Armor, Blood Angels lore. Oof, that's an hour and four minutes. Power Armor, Lady Malice. Mallies? Never heard of that one. Uh, Black Templar. Silent King. War in Heavens. Ooh. Yeah. So there's plenty of these videos that I definitely want to get to. There's like at least, what, seven, eight of them I want to see. So, yeah. So definitely stick around because i'm gonna be doing a lot more of these videos if there is anyone you want me to specifically uh you know cover ahead of time in case if there's one that you want me to see first you know uh let me know so anyways other than that um yeah just stick around more videos are on the way and i will see you guys next time